In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. My dear friends, religious traditions and practices are good, but they should neither be a cover-up nor a substitute for a lack of personal intimacy with the Lord. Though we give God service with our lips and our actions, our hearts are far from Him. This is hypocrisy, about which the Lord reproaches the religious leaders and the teachers of the law in today's Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord for the gift of a simple heart. Faith itself is a gift of God, and we are able to come close to God primarily because of His grace rather than our own merits. To begin our celebration, we once again call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate meaningfully the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. Lord, have mercy. You, called, you came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord of mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Moses exhorts the people of Israel to keep the statutes and commandments of the Lord as a sign of their love and thanksgiving to Him. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoyed upon you, you shall not add what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus you will give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, this great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God? Is it to us whenever we call upon Him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. The one who does justice will live. Whoever walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, 
while he honors those who fear the Lord. Who lends not his money in nursery, and accept no bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be disturbed. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. Those brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father as this to care for orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unsustained by the world. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Father will to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed. The purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him. Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? They responded, Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites? As it is written, These people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching us doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts and chastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within and they defile. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat, sa lahat na patuloy na nakikisa sa pagdiriwang ng misa dito sa Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Magandang umaga po. I know most of you ay nakapunta na sa airport. And when nasa airport ka, kahit gan, ganitong pandemya, pero even before, no, lalong-lalo na before the pandemic, the airport is a busy place. Diba? Pagbaba mo pa lang sa sasakyan at pipila ka, aba na kagad ng pila, Every, everybody seems to be doing something every time. Sa immigration, yung mga gwardiya, uh, pagka nakita mo yung eroplano, merong nag-aakyat ng mga bagahe, merong nagbababa, merong naglalagay ng gasolina. It's a busy place. And everybody seems to be doing something at any given time, at any given moment. But every time na merong maglaland na eroplano, it seems you can feel that the, most of the attention, most of the energy, ay focus doon sa isang eroplano na magla-landing o kaya eroplano na magti-take off. It seems that all the energy is focused on that, on the safety. And I remember that, uh, that, that story because yung focus doon sa isang eroplano at a, some, at a given point in time, yun ang tinatawag nila na wildly important goal or wig sa management. Yung mga nasa management dito, eh, na, naiintindihan yun. At any given moment, merong isang napaka-importante, the wildly important goal. But everything is important. Lahat po ay mahalaga doon. But at that point, lahat ng energy, halos lahat ng energy, lahat ng focus ay doon sa eroplanong bababa maglalan looking after the safety of that plane and of the passengers the wildly important goal the wig or, or the goal keeps our main goal in sight while also considering the smaller goals yung mga maliliit na ginagawa doon sa airport importante pa rin po yun no what we have our ultimate goal and we have our small goals Yung ganun pong paghahalimbawa ay maaari ring maihalin tulad sa ating buhay. Meron tayong main goal sa buhay. O ano yung main goal ninyo sa buhay? Anong gusto ninyo? No? Even when we were kids, we were always asked that question, ano gusto mong maging? No? Anong pinaka-main goal mo sa buhay? It seems that it has been ingrained in us uh, ever since na bata tayo. Ano yung pinaka-main goal mo sa buhay? No? And yet, along the way, we seem to forget it. We seem to forget the main goal. And then focus all our attention doon sa mga maliliit na mga goals. Importante rin, but maliliit na goals sa ating buhay. In today's Gospel reading, we are confronted by the importance ng batas sa ating buhay. In a gist, laws are important. But the laws are not our wildly important goal. Lahat ay may, lahat, paglabas mo ng bahay, halos lahat ay may batas. Di ba, no? Mag-drive ka sa expressway, pagpasok mo pa lang sa toll gate, nakalagay na doon kung ano yung speed limit. And along the way, may mga, ma, may mga reminders. Buckle up. No? Put your seatbelt. No? And then every now and then, i-remind ka ulit. Mm, 100 kilometers per hour lang. 80 kilometers per hour. Uh, rules. Rules. Sa buhay natin. Pagpasok nyo dito sa simbahan, ano yung bumungad sa inyo? Rules and regulations. Health protocol. Kaya nga, ganyan pa rin ang pagkakaupo ninyo. And our ushers would... Be very diligent in putting you into your own seat places. No? Rules. But if we simply look at the laws for the sake of following the law, we miss the point. Diba? 
The laws in the expressway are meant to keep us safe. Ligtas. The rules, the health protocols here, tedious yang i-implement but we're not uh, keeping our foot uh, off the gas in implementing this. It's meant to keep all those who come here safe. But it's not the end all and be all. It is meant to keep you safe. Make no mistake about it, nakakapagod magpa-implement ng mga ganitong protocols. But we continue because we have your best, your health, your safety in our hearts. Ganun din po, sa binasa nating Ibanghelyo, the Lord is complaining. No? Uh, it seems that people, the, the Pharisees, are so much focused on the detalye. On the rules, on on something that is the small aspect and following the law that they have missed the whole meaning of why there are laws and why there are batas. Erong kasabihan tayo sa English that when we focus so much on the trees, we miss the forest. They have mistaken the trees for the forest. The laws are there in order for us hopefully to see the big picture and that is what is the big picture yung big picture po yun po yung nilalaman ng mga pagbasa natin sa araw na ito sa unang pagbasa we again encounter Moses saying para sa ano itong mga batas na itinatag noong panahon niya simply it is meant keep us along the path of goodness and keep us close to Yahweh. That was the end goal of the Ten Commandments, to keep us along the path of righteousness and therefore keep us close to God. It's not simply the following of the Ten Commandments. We can memorize it. Mula pa pagkabata sa katikisam ninyo, no? Uh, recite the Ten Commandments, no? Uh, ilan ang patungkol sa Diyos, ilan patungkol sa kapwa. Uh, di ba yung mga ganoon? It's not. No? It's not just that. It should not end there. And even in the responsorial sum, ang ganda po ng responsorial sum. Hmm. Ano nakalagay doon sa responsorial sum? In the responsorial sum, it goes this way. To do justice. To live in the presence of God. To do justice not for justice sake, but to be able to live in the presence of God. It is only by doing justice that we will be able to have the courage, we will be able to have the right na mamuhay sa harapan ng Diyos. Ang ganda, no? Not for justice sake, no? but no? to be able to live sa presensya ng Panginoon. Doon sa pangalawang pagbasa um, I call this do not lip sync sapagkat yung sa pangalawang pagbasa we are being reminded not only to be hearers of the law but to be doers of it in other words there has to be a sync nakakita na po ba kayo nang nagli lip sync na wala sa wala sa ano wala sa kumpas Iba yung lumalabas doon sa, sa audio sa kasapagbuka ng, ng, ng bunganga. Ganon yung nangyayari kapag hindi magkatugma ang batas at saka doon sa goal kung bakit uh, ilinagay yung mga batas na ito. Out of sync. Hmm. Mga nga ako rito pero iba yung naririnig ninyo. Hindi nakasync. Again, the reminder is to sink what comes out of our mouth, of our lips, to what is being, what our hearts are beating for. In sync. No? Sa Ibanghelyo, the Lord is very direct. And how do we do that? By putting the heart in the right place. Nung high school po, meron kaming book review. Ang libro ay uh, The Little Prince. No? Little Prince. And then meron doong, meron doong part 
that we were asked to memorize. It is only with the heart that one can see rightly because what is invisible, what is essential is invisible to the eye. The heart, if the heart is in the right place, it can see correctly and put things into its own proper place and perspective. Sang, sa Ibanghelyo, sabi ng Panginoon, it is not that what comes in that makes a man um, uh, impure. It is what comes out of our lips. Because what comes out of our lips hopefully is also something that comes out of our hearts. Kaya kapag hindi magkatugma, we hear the Lord reminding us, You hypocrites. You give me praise with your lips, but your heart far away from me. Kailangan magkatugma. Anda, no? Kaya yung batas, it's a heuristic device. It's an instrument. It's a law. Not for the sake of following the law, but for something that is more divine, something that is more important. Remember, the laws are made for man and not man for the law. The laws are made, the laws of God are made to keep us close to Him, to keep our hearts beating with Him, in Him, and for Him. O, matanong kayo ulit. Ano ba ang wildly important goal ninyo sa buhay. Kindly all stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us call upon our Father to cleanse our hearts and minds so that we may render Him sincere worship and be filled with His grace with humble heart. We pray, let your response be, Hear us, O loving Father. Hear us, O loving Father. For Pope Francis, our Bishop, priests and deacons, may their way of life be consistent to the sacraments they celebrate, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. For the leaders of our nation, may they put an end to the spread of deceit, hatred, blasphemies, and killings, and may they promote and protect the dignity of the poor and the marginalized, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. For those who find their life burdensome, May they unite their sufferings and pains with Jesus and be comforted by their families and communities, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. For all of us gathered, may we truly offer our whole mind and heart to the Lord as part of our true worship, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. For our beloved dead, May the Lord show them great care and raise them up to eternal life. 
We pray. Lord, hear us, O loving Father. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our communities and our personal intentions. We pray. Hear us, O loving Father. We continue to pray for the frontliners, our frontliners in this fight against this disease. We pray for their well-being, for their safety. We also pray, continue to pray for the guidance, enlightenment of our leaders, both in the church and in the government. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, O loving Father. We continue to pray for all the intentions and the, of our devotees of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, especially for their well-being, for their health and safety, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O loving Father. We pause for a while in silence to offer your personal intentions. Father, may we worship you with our whole hearts, hear the pleas of your faithful people, as we promise that the graces we shall receive will always be offered for your great third glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always a blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raise up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us a body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks. broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Archbishop, Fidelis, our Auxiliary Bishop, Gerard, the Master of the Order of Preachers, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, Apostles, peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer to one another the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. My dear friends, behold our Lord Jesus Christ, our healer, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. Renewed by this breath from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and steer us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. Brothers and sisters, good morning. The Dominican Community of the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag is pleased to inform you that the October Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag will be on October 3, 2021, first Sunday of October. The Novena Masses will be scheduled at 6 a.m., 7.30 a.m., 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 12 noon and 4.30 p.m. from September 24 to October 2, 2021. Additional Mass at 3 p.m. on September 26, Sunday. We invite you to participate in these Novena Masses and be one with us in expressing our devotion to Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. If you wish to sponsor one or several of the Novena Masses, you may fill out the form at the counters for Masses area and submit it with your donation and you will be given an acknowledgement receipt. Or you may visit our website, www.manawagminorbasilica.org at Online Pamisa, where you will find available online and other options for donation. All names of donors and sponsors for Novena Masses will appear in the electronic souvenir program. Thank you very much for your continued support. God bless you. Please stand. Sa maiksing salita, ibig sabihin lang po nung inasang announcement ay tuloy ang piyesta natin sa Oktubre. And uh, we invite you to uh, continue uh, joining us and being with us in the celebration uh, of the October Feast or yung piyesta ng Santo Rosario ng, ng Manawag. And also po, uh, this October, we will be launching po yung celebration ng uh, centenary, yung 100 years ng canonical coronation ni Apo Baket, ng imahe ni Apo Baket. Uh, Mag-100 years na po siya sa 2026 pa naman, but we are already launching the activities no, uh, this coming October. And we will begin with the launch ng, ng Misa Apo Baket. Misa meaning meron na po siyang sariling songs na gagamitin sa Misa that when you hear those songs uh, being sung here at the Minor Basilica, we know, for all the devotees, we know that it is coming from the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. So please join us. Continue to pray for us. We're doing a little bit. No? We know very much that we have all been affected by this uh, ongoing pandemic but we're not stopping from making repairs here and there making developments here and there just a small bit to continue uh, this tradition here at the minor basilica of our all the rosary of manawag so we need po your prayers and uh, makakaasa rin po kayo ng patuloy na pagdarasal po namin para sa inyo the lord be with you and with your spirit Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you in His kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. Amen. May He nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. And may He turn your steps towards Himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord through one another. Thanks be to God. We shall now say the prayer for the blessing ng mga may sakit to be followed by the prayer for the blessing of your religious articles. 
Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters, feed them from all illness, and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For your religious articles, we pray. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may your religious articles be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.